Almost 100 years ago, the 371 kingdoms of our land came together to unite as one nation, Nigeria. That year was 1914, and in 2014, Nigeria will celebrate its centenary. This is cause for celebration. Celebrating the sons and daughters of our soil who have contributed so much to Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Celebrating our nation's journey, and most importantly, celebrating how much greater we can still be. Our celebration will not begin when the sun rises and end when the moon sets, but will be an enduring reminder that will emerge from our land. When a man plants a tree, he knows he may never get to sit under its shade, yet his children will be able to pick its fruit and his grandchildren play in its branches. With this project, we will think beyond the present, beyond the next 100 years. We will leave a legacy for generations to come. After our people, the earth beneath our feet is our country's greatest asset. Nature's bounty doesn't begin and end with its plants and rivers or birds and beasts. Its true value lies in the systems, processes and structures it has perfected over millennia. The ones that allow its inhabitants to grow, flourish and thrive abundantly. Those who came before us knew this and made use of nature's examples in their lives. But as time went on, we have become blind to the vastness of nature's wisdom. Instead of adjusting our needs to live in harmony with the earth, we've changed the earth to suit our needs, often beyond repair, but no more. We will look to the field of biomimicry and use our natural resources as our model, our measure, and our mentor. In looking to our land, our response can truly be rooted in Nigeria. The systems and structures of nature will inform our principles on how to build a city unlike any other. One that erodes all preconceptions of how a city should be and can be built. What makes nature's systems function so effectively is the fact that there is no stasis. There is constant and perpetual flow of energy, of nutrients, of materials, and of information. This key insight informs everything we do. Nature does not allow for waste in construction or destruction. Everything is built using available resources as efficiently as possible, with matter being broken down and reused where it falls. Resources and materials will be generated, used and disposed of as efficiently and effectively as possible. This regenerative circular metabolism and the constant flow of resources will nurture its inhabitants without exploiting the habitat. We can also mimic nature's model for sustainable and effective growth. As with other living organisms, the city will be built as a series of cells that are simultaneously self-sufficient and interdependent. As the cells grow and divide, their decentralized, self-organizing modular design will be able to rapidly and cooperatively respond and adapt to both their needs and the needs of those around them. This will hold true at building, cell and settlement scale. Nature itself will be embedded as an integral part of the city and be used as an essential resource. Water, arguably the planet's most precious commodity, will be allowed to flow freely throughout the city and be both respected and utilized to the advantage of all its inhabitants. Green belts that follow natural water courses will service an aesthetic need and function as urban agriculture that will reduce the need for importing resources from outside the cells. The edges of the waterways will act as biofilters where wastewater is turned into clean, usable water. Nature will also inform the design of the transport systems so that it is optimized for the best possible flow for a new set of transport hierarchies. Transport corridors will not divide communities and push food traffic to the periphery. A new narrative will be described for the residents. 
Pedestrians and non-motorized transport will be given the highest priority. Their newfound status will allow them to reconnect with the city. They will be encouraged to interact and engage with their fellow citizens as never before. All other forms of transport will be tailored around that need. Public transport will be embedded into the infrastructure so as to seamlessly connect residents with others beyond their cells. Motor vehicles, especially cars, will not be excluded from the master plan, but they will be integrated carefully into the background. The health of the ecosystem will be maintained by the use of as much green and zero emission transport technology as possible. Using these principles, we will build a city like no other, a smart city, one that functions like a mature and abundant ecosystem. And with any successful ecosystem, the more diverse it is, the more vibrant and rich it will be. Nigeria's diversity will be represented by each of her 36 states, all uniquely embedded in the urban fabric for all to see, through a diverse range of projects. A Nigerian cultural and heritage core will include the plaza of the first century, Gardens of the Next Century, Colosseum of Heroes, Presidential Archive, Museum of National and Cultural History and Civilization, Gallery of Galaxies, and Center for the Promotion of Indigenous Technology. Diverse commercial, retail, and ICT projects will include a boutique shopping mall, an expo and convention center, an African arts and craft market, central library and ICT center, and a sustainability institute. The city's flagship hotel and eco-resort will rival the world's best, as the hotel and tourism accommodation will include internationally renowned brands, as well as create opportunities for innovative African brands to gain traction. A range of residential opportunities will be on offer, from luxury golf course villas and urban apartments, right through to inclusionary housing projects, frail care and retirement facilities, short-led apartments and the like. The housing setup and opportunities will allow all Nigerians, regardless of stature or status, to feel included. World-class entertainment and leisure developments will include a theme park and animal park, alongside a golf course, theaters, cinemas, restaurants, cafes, bars, clubs, and possibly international polo facilities. Medical facilities will include a premier hospital and wellness center suitable for medical tourism. The city's sports developments will comprise of a stadium, indoor sports center, tennis academy, aquatic center, sports hospital, and a high performance center. By creating these developments in line with the principles of biomimicry, the result will be a city in whose footsteps other nations will follow. A city that ebbs and flows with nature's current, not against it. A city of integration, not segregation. A city that will reconnect us with our forefathers' way of life, with our neighbors, and with our fellow countrymen. A city that we can say is truly Nigerian and world-class. A city founded not upon the African Renaissance, but upon African rediscovery. The infrastructure we lay out will not be the sole reason people from all walks of life will be attracted to live in the city. A city is a powerful mediator of human behavior. The way it is planned and built and develops can have a profound effect on how people react to and interact with each other within it. Ours will be a powerful motivator of unity. Ours will facilitate inspiration and be a catalyst of regenerative forces 
physically, culturally, and emotionally. It will be inclusive of the desires of all people and forever be a reminder of what is possible when we come together, united with a common purpose and goal. It will make us proud. It will make our fellow Africans proud and they will be inspired by what Nigeria has accomplished. The world will look on in awe and look to Africa. And it is us that will have made it so.